Now that we've learned that strings and text are basically just lists of characters, we can fairly easily do simple encryption using that fact. So to start with, I've got a variable plain text set to this is a test, and I'm going to use a for loop in order to iterate through each of those characters. If I run this using the wing IDE, you can see that it's printed each one of these individual characters up and down. In order to make this print out a little bit easier on the screen, I'm going to use the end option and set the end parameter just to a space. So it's going to print each one of the characters, but instead of a carriage return at the end, which is default, it's going to print it with a space. And now that I've run it, you can see this is a test with the spaces in between. Now in the computer memory, letters are not actually stored as letters but they were stored as numbers and each number corresponds to a particular character. For example, take a look at this. As you can see from out of the book, there are certain numbers that correspond to each character. So what the computer has in memory will be numbers like this. So when I store the word this, it starts off with a T and then a lowercase h over here, a 104. So in memory is 84, 104, and so forth in order to store that particular text. This is because in the computer memory all we have are sets of ones and zeros. Specifically each byte is composed of eight bits. A bit is a one or a zero and a byte then would be a grouping of eight bits. And one byte corresponds to a number from 0 to 255, which is 2 to the eighth power is 256, but we need that extra to represent 0. So we have 256 different possibilities, which goes from 0 to 255. And we have a table that goes from 0 up to 255 that represents all these different characters. I haven't shown you a full table here. You can go and search online if you want to take a look at the full table, but this has some of the most common characters that we're printing out to the screen and the numbers that they represent. If you want more complex characters, it actually takes more bytes if you want to represent things such as Cyrillic characters or kanji characters, but that's beyond the scope of this particular conversation right here. So how do I get those numbers? Well right here I'm printing out a particular character. I can change this and use the ORD function. If you pass a single character to ORD, it will return the number that it's associated with. In fact, you can try that down here. I can do ORD and if you need to use single quotes for this, X will give me an 88. ORD, a small p, will give me 112. So when I run this using that ORD function, I've got 84, 104, 105, and the entire string has been converted into numbers. Let's change that just a little bit. I'm going to set X equal to ORD of C, and then I'm going to add one to X, and I'm going to print out X instead. So now rather than showing the numbers each character represents, I'm showing the numbers plus one each character represents. And why I'm doing that, I'll get to that in just a bit, but let's run this. There we go. We've added one to each character before we've printed it out. If you want to go the other way, that is convert from a number into the character that it represents, you can use a different function. I'm going to create a new variable called c2, and I'm going to use the chr function. It's going to take the number that is in x and convert it back to a character. Again, to review, I'm using the ORD goes from a character to the ASCII value or the number that it represents. 
I'm adding one, and then chr takes it from an ASCII value back to a character. But before I did that, remember, I added one. So when I run this, well, I also need to change this to C2. So when I run this, again now, I have taken that original string and I've switched it so that I'm doing each next letter instead of the original letter. So instead of T, the next letter is U. And I can take out this extra space if I want. And right down here, I have my encrypted string created by adding one to the number representation of each letter and then going ahead and converting it back. Because remember, this used to be ABC and it is now BCD. You could change, of course, you could add two or three if you wanted or create more complex encryption, but this gets us started on how to do the encryption. Now, how do you go the other way? Let's take this string. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to create an encrypted string and paste it in there. Now, really, I just need to do the same thing that I did before. But instead of working with encrypted, instead of working with plain text, I'm going to work with encrypted. And instead of adding one, I'm going to subtract one. And now when I run it, whoops, I should have added an extra print statement here. That'll add a blank line. I've got my encrypted, and I have taken that same string and decrypted. So now we can use this as a quick way of doing our super secret decoder ring and pass messages back and forth. I wouldn't actually encourage you to do a full-fledged encryption this way, but it is interesting to take a look at how the letters and how the text are actually stored in memory and how you can manipulate those values to do something with them.